Hello and welcome back to Witch Fix. Uh, today I'm going to be looking at a new book which I found, which uh, is part of a, a series that I would describe as sort of a cosy mystery series, which if you've never come across that term before, which I had not until a few months ago, uh, it's basically like chick lit, but there is also a detective story element. There tends to be a lot of like cafes, cakes, um, series that revolve around just like a business but there's also crime solving, which is weird. But this one is a series about an actual private investigator. So there's maybe my hope going into it was there'll be a little bit more focus on like the crime element because I do love a little bit of a, a mystery and a little bit of crime. So the book I'm talking about is by Adele Abbott and it is called Witch is When It All Began, which is obviously a pun. And that is A Witch P.I. Mystery Number One, which is how it's described on Goodreads just in case you wanted to find the whole series on there. According to the website for Adele Abbott, there are 36 of these bad boys in the series and a book of short stories. And you can buy them, as I did, on Amazon as an ebook, or you can buy them apparently also in paperback. Although uh, 29 to 36 are only available to pre-order as paperback, so I guess they haven't gotten around to making those a paperback yet. So I picked this up on Kindle because the cover is it's quite a generic looking kind of chiclet type cover in that it's bright colours, there's silhouettes, but it does look quite professional and quite well put together. And I was like, oh, OK, so this is definitely a book that someone's put some time and effort into and there's others in the series. Um, so it, this is probably a good one to add in to my list of things to read for the podcast. And it was only like two ninety nine for the first book. So I was like, it's not hugely expensive so I'll just buy it and I'll stick it on my Kindle and I'll read it when I get around to it. I recently went up to Glastonbury for the Witches Market which was very fun and because it's like a seven hour coach journey from where I live to get to Bristol which is where you need to get the bus to get to Glastonbury I had a lot of time in which to read things on my Kindle and I read this because I was tired and I thought ah, I could do it with an easy read so I jumped straight into this one and it was quite enjoyable I have to say. I'm just going to read you the blurb, which is from the Goodreads page for this book. When the going gets tough, private investigator Jill Gooder has been hired to find a serial killer because, as usual, the police can't buy a clue. Jill, the not-so-proud owner of a crazy one-eyed cat, probably can't expect too much help from her PA slash secretary, Mrs V, who spends all day knitting. And just in case all of that wasn't bad enough, Jill's just about to discover she's a witch break out the custard creams so from that you can probably get a sense of the fact that the uh, mystery is not particularly central to the plot of the book there's a lot of other stuff going on and like a lot of chick lit it sort of tends to be mostly about the kind of awkward situations between larger than life characters and just general cute cozy shit and conversations between people about romance and careers and money problems and basically just like normal conversations not much of it is I would say centered towards the actual crime in the book which is fine because I guess if you're looking for a cozy mystery you're looking for a mystery but not like a real head scratcher you're mainly looking into it for like a nice little read about a nice lady and there just happens to also be some murders going on so that's pretty cool so the way we're brought into the book is Jill getting this case. Basically, there's a serial killer that the paper is calling the animal because he's killed three women whose last names happen to be animal names. So you've got lion, lamb and the most recent lady who was called Fox. And the boyfriend of the most recent victim has hired her on to investigate because he doesn't feel like the police are taking this whole animal thing seriously, which they're not because they don't really think that it's a real serial killer and so she goes about trying to investigate what happens the investigations te is basically just her going around and talking to different people but that's in between all of the witch stuff happening and the family stuff as well the basis of the whole witch reveal is the fact that jill was adopted she has an adopted sister kathy and their parents are dead and having tried to contact her birth mother before and being rejected Jill's kind of made her peace with never really knowing what family she comes from and she views her adoptive family very much as her real family then she gets a call sort of out of the blue saying oh your birth mother is dying and would like to speak to you 
on like her deathbed basically she needs to speak to you so jill goes there and i felt that was really well handled it's quite realistic she has a lot of conflicting emotions which are really well dealt with in the book so i applaud that because a lot of writers would probably have just steamrolled over that and just kind of gone well this is what i need to happen in the plot so it needs to happen quite quickly whereas i think the writer of this one took the time to make it happen believably which i very much enjoyed and i bookmarked the page because unfortunately i found what happened next quite funny which uh it's probably not what they were going for. Uh, this is on the Kindle, so I can't give a page number, but it's the uh, the 11% mark. So uh, she's gone in, she's she's seeing her mum in the, the nursing home. And I was reading it and I was like, oh, this is actually quite a rather written book for one that I bought for like less than £3 on Kindle. And then this happens. Jill, the woman's eyes were barely open. Her voice was little more than a whisper. I'm here, I said. Her thin arm was resting on top of the bed covers. Her frail fingers opened, and I knew she wanted me to put my hand in hers. I did, and her weak fingers closed around mine. Jill, she said again. Her voice seemed to fade with every passing second. I'm here. I had so many questions. There was so much I was desperate to know, but it was too late. The woman in front of me was close to death. Come closer, she said. I looked through the window that ran the full length of the room. But there was no sign of the nurse. I wished Cathy could have been with me. Closer, she said again. I leaned forward in the chair, stooping so my ear was close to her face. Did she want to tell me something? Perhaps I was going to find out why she'd given me up after all. You're a witch! The force of her words took me by surprise. From somewhere she'd mustered the strength to speak much louder than she had previously. No sooner had she spoken the words than the monitor changed to one continuous beep. At precisely that moment, something I can only liken to an electric shock pulsed through my entire body. It was so powerful that it knocked me back into the chair. I felt completely drained. I tried to stand, but my legs didn't want to know. So I found that unbelievably amusing and I'm not entirely sure it was meant to be funny but just the idea of her getting closer and closer to this sort of weak frail looking old lady in the bed and going like oh what is it what is it you want to tell me and her uh, the lady suddenly like jumping up and grabbing her and going you're a witch like she's channeling Hagrid or something and then just literally in that second dying and just going like eh. It was very amusing to me. It seemed like something that would happen in a comedy sketch. And I just I found that so funny that I couldn't really take the book as seriously from that moment on, which was a kind of a shame, really, because it was quite enjoyable up until that point. But um, that's not to say like I didn't enjoy the rest of it, but it just made me laugh so much. Now, following on from this moment of genuine hilarity, Jill actually thinks that her mum was just being horrible to her and that she called her there to like reject her and kind of mock her one last time. So she's having a bit of a difficult time of it. And I mention this only because this kind of leads into a moment that happens just slightly later on in the book, around the 12% mark. Um, this is sort of a theme that I noticed with the book and was kind of my main quibble with it, is that sometimes Jill doesn't really react or ask the questions that I feel like a normal person would have or react in the way that a normal person would. It's kind of like the author is, for, for the most part of the book, they handle it really well and it's really realistic and all the characters sort of behave the way that normal people would. And then occasionally it's like they were having maybe a bit of an off day and they didn't think about exactly how a normal person would take a certain situation and therefore that bit of the book comes off as being a little bit odd uh, so this is one occasion jill receives a, a magic spell book in the post and she assumes that her birth mother sent it to her as like a, a cruel joke to kind of go on from what she'd said at the when she died that she'd pre-arranged for this spell book to be sent to her now one might say that that's not the most likely scenario, but it's probably more likely to the average person than actually being a witch. So I was prepared to accept that she would think that in her confused and emotional state. But then she gets a phone call from her aunt Lucy and she uh, asks her about the book. So she says, I wanted to check you'd received the book. You sent it. Yes, your mother asked me to send it to you in the event of her death. Normally you'd have started learning spells when you were a child, but... But I wasn't there, I spat the words. My mother had given me away. Jill, 
I told you it wasn't like that. Your mother truly. Stop. Please don't try to tell me that she loved me. A mother who loves her child does not use her dying breath to call her a witch. So I feel the fact. So Jill basically says you would have started learning spells when you were a child. Oh, sorry. Lucy says that Jill should have learned spells when she was a child. And the underlying theme of that is that she genuinely believes that Jill is a witch. But Jill just kind of steamrolls over her because I guess the author wants her to have this outburst where she's frustrated and upset about what's happened which I completely understand but the way to do that in a way that doesn't make Jill seem like she's just missed a crucial element of what's going on here unusual for a private investigator is to not have Lucy say something like that to make her to make it more obvious that Jill is actually really a witch so I would have personally left that line out and just had it be like oh yeah she asked me to send it to you what do you mean she asked you to send it to me how horrible and then it reads more realistically and it doesn't give you that weird jolting feeling like hang on did you even hear that Jill are we going to think about that later no we're probably not Uh, which is a similar thing that happens after Jill um, comes into her powers after her mother's death then she starts hearing her cat talk but when she turns around and goes did you just say something the cat is like meow um this happens like three four times and i feel like after the the first time maybe you can brush off as i'm just stressed the second time you're definitely going to investigate further and maybe stick around and try and talk to the cat some more the fact that it happens like four times before she's even like oh yeah my cat is talking to me seemed like she was being a bit slow on the uptake also it's never really explained why the cat is talking and then just goes back to meowing because it's it's not said like oh well you were just coming into your powers so they were kind of phasing in and out and they wouldn't always work um and it's not even a magical cat she can actually just hear like all animals talking so the fact that she doesn't then hear any other animals like birds or whatever talking when she's just out and about is just slightly strange and again gave me the feeling of "Mm, maybe some things here haven't been thought all the way through Aside from those niggles, it was quite an enjoyable book. It was a very quick read. I finished it off on my return coach journey and it basically covers all the bases. It's got a romance plot line. It's got a satisfactory ending to the mystery, even though it's kind of a predictable one. But I wasn't expecting super complicated crime in a book like this. It got the job done. Uh, It introduced some interesting characters, introduced the supernatural world. I'm not 100% keen on cosy mystery books that, or any books really, that say, oh, witches are real, and then jump straight into, oh, also vampires and werewolves and everything else is real. Um, For once, it would be nice to have something where it's just witches that are real and there are other, like, supernatural creatures, or at least that there are different supernatural creatures, because I feel like it's always vampires and werewolves, because... I guess Twilight and other things but yeah it would have felt a bit more original if that hadn't been the case but eh, we'll see what they do with these other magical races in other books having said that I'm probably not going to read the 39 books currently in this series because that's a lot of books um so I might give the second one a go Uh, I don't really want to get sucked into reading a whole bunch of these but yeah, it was it was OK. And I definitely recommend it if you're looking for something a little bit cutesy, a little bit witchy, just to kind of maybe occupy you over the Christmas season when you're feeling just a little bit festive and fun. Or if you're looking for something like if you really like reading Chicklet, but you want to read Chicklet about a more witchy character that has some magical things going on, then I think it would be a good read for you. It's definitely competently written. You're not going to be disappointed in that sense. And it's definitely on par with things like uh, Sophie Kinsella and other like big chiclet names in terms of the character and and the way that they're written. So that's pretty good. Definitely give it a look Uh, on Kindle Unlimited. Obviously, you can get it for free. But if you want to buy it from Amazon, this book is 99p. So that's pretty good. And all the other ones in the series so far look to be about 2.99. Maybe the more recent ones creep up to 4.99. But Yeah, you can definitely buy the first one for 99p, definitely do that, Um, even if it just sits on your Kindle until you get round to it, it's going to be a a good read to get you back into reading maybe if you've had a bit of a a dry spell or if you're just looking for something kind of unchallenging and fun to read. 
If you have any recommendations, please do get in touch. You can do so on Twitter, which is at witchfix, and you can do so on the email, which is witchfixpodcast at gmail.com. In the meantime, you can also donate to my Patreon so that I can buy other books and things to keep going with the podcast. And there are links uh, in the description for the episode on how to do that. Also, if you go to Twitter, at some point I will be posting up a an Amazon wish list of titles and things that have been recommended or that I would like to see reviewed on the podcast. So um, you can buy those as gifts and they will just come to me, which is fine because I don't do a PO box thing, but they'll just come to me and you won't know where I live. So it'll all be fine. And if there's something in particular you would like to send my way, let me know and I'll put it on the list as well. I hope I'll see you in the next episode. And in the meantime, 